My name is Charles Karanja. I'm a pastor of the Light of Glory House here in Nairobi. God is a great person. God is great. God is great. I know you might be sitting there and wondering, what do you mean God is great when I'm faced with all these troubles all around me? But I came to remind you that, listen, 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 in spite of the unpaid bills, in spite of the debts that may be spiraling out of control, in spite of the issues that your marriage is having, in spite of the fact that maybe your children are wayward, in spite of the fact that life seems to be out of control, I came to announce to you that God is great and God is still God. God has not left his place, neither has he changed who he is. Can I tell you something? The Bible says in Psalms 47 verse 2 that God is a great king over all the earth. God is king even over wherever you are. Whether you are up there in Lodwa or you are Namanga. Whether you are listening to us from whichever part of the world you are joining us online, let me announce to you that God is a great king over all the earth. God is the one who is in charge and not the troubles that you are facing. And let me tell you something about this great God who is also the great king over the, all the earth. He only does great things. The Bible says in Psalm 71 verse 19, and also your righteousness, O God, is very high. You have done great things, O God. Who is like you? God only does great things. Can I tell you what Exodus 14 verse 31 says? Does Israel saw the great work which the Lord God had done in Egypt? You are about to see the great work that God is about to do in your life. You are about to see God's greatness revealed in everything that pertains to you. I want to encourage you and to tell you that this morning. Today, as you step out of wherever you are, step out knowing that God is great, that he is a great king, and that he does great things. Can I tell you something also to encourage you that no one can compare, nothing can compare with the greatness that God has. No one can compare with the greatness of God. No one can compare with what he is able to do. The Bible says in Psalm 77 verse 13, Oh, your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as you. Who is so great a God as the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who is everything, the one who is the supplier. He's the one who's Jehovah Jireh. He's the one who's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. He's the one who is the God of our salvation. He's the God of our deliverance. He's the one who is our maker. He is the one who is in control and not the issues that seem to be afflicting your life. And I tell you something, inside each and every one of us who believes in God is a seed of greatness. The Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 1 that after God had created the earth, in verse 26, he enters a conversation and says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. I'm made in the image of God. I'm made with the likeness of God. That tells me that I'm made in the image of greatness. In the, in the aspect of the likeness, everything that God does that is great, then even me, uh, only things I can do are great things. Can I announce to you and to tell you something? That from today, in the name of Jesus, you will begin to appreciate that your identity is one of greatness and that your acts are those of greatness. When people look at your business, they'll see how great it is. When people look at your marriage, they'll see how great it is. When people look at your family, they will look and say, wow, look at such a great family. Everything about you will be great in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you something? something. The earth and the generations that we are uh, living in, everybody is waiting to see the greatness of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 19, that creation is groaning, waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. If my God is the one who is such a great king over all the earth, he's the one who only does great things and no one can compare with his greatness, then surely creation is waiting to see the manifestation of those who are doing great things. Can I hear a louder amen? I want to encourage and to tell you something, that the thoughts that God has for you and I are thoughts of greatness. In fact, the Bible says in Psalms 139 verse 17 that the psalm of, the, the, the psalm that God has, the psalm of thoughts that God has for you and I, they are great. God has so many good thoughts about you that they are only classed as great. Can I talk to you and to tell you something? You are born to be great. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, 
saying that we, here I am, we are my children, we are for signs and for wonders. You are born for greatness. You are born to be great. You are born to be a wonder. You are born to be a sign and a wonder in this generation. You are not born to be a sign of failure. You are born to be a sign of greatness. You are born to confound others with the greatness of what God is doing in your life. You are born to show people the greatness and goodness of God. You are born that wherever you walk, everybody looks at you and marvels. Everybody looks at you in amazement at the greatness of what God can do through you. Can I tell you something? Greatness is not the preservation of a few people. Greatness is not the preservation of those who are elected in, in political office. Greatness is not the position that is only given to those who are chosen. Greatness is your right. You are the child of God. Greatness is your right. I want to encourage you to tell you something. My brother, my sister, listen, greatness is your right. And let me tell you something. God's definition of greatness is not the same as the world's definition of greatness. There was a rich man. Jesus gave a parable of a rich man and Lazarus. This rich man had everything. After he harvested, he only wanted to increase his bonds. There was a poor man outside his place. And that poor man had nothing. The Bible tells us that when they both died, the rich man was in hell and the poor man was in the great place called heaven. Let me tell you something. The world may be looking and thinking everything is all made up about you. But when God looks at you, does, is everything made up with you? What do I need to do that I may be great as God is such a great God? What must I do that I may walk in greatness? Number one, feed on the word of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 that by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. Everything in the world, everything is made by the word of God. In fact, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word of God continues to tell us in verse 3 that nothing was made without Him. Nothing was made without the Word of God. It is by feeding in the Word of God that you can be able to create greatness in your life. It is when you spend time feeding on the Word of God that you walk into a place of greatness. Can I tell you something about the Word of God? The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, Three, having been born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible seed. Uh, God's seed is one that is incorruptible. It cannot be manipulated by man or by woman. It cannot be defiled by anybody. But the seed of God that we, which, by which we are born again is one of greatness. And God's greatness is not corruptible. Can I encourage you and tell you something? The word of God is the one that lights the path of greatness. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives me light. Uh, any situation that you are looking and saying this situation is big. Uh, I came to announce to you that as you allow the word of God to enter your life, light begins to shine over your path in the name of Jesus. Uh, can I tell you something? The word of God is the one that is the doorway to success. Uh, Joshua was about to enter into Canaan as the leader of over three million children of Israel. They were about to partake of the inheritance. Uh, the promise that they had always held that they'd walk into a place. Uh, and God looked at Joshua and told him, be strong in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. And then in verse 8, God tells him, listen, meditate on the word of God day and night uh, that you may have success, that you may prosper in the way that you are going. The word of God is the one that brings you to a place of prosperity. The word of God is the one that brings you into a place that you are established. The word of God is the one that shows you where you are to go. The word of God reveals to you God's will. It it reveals to you God's mind. The word of God is the constitution of the kingdom of God. If you want to see the kingdom of God manifested in your life, meditate on the word of God. Spend time in the word of God and let the word of God have its way in your life. Let it enter you. Don't just be one who hears, uh, but let the word of God enter you. Let it be one that comes and takes residence within you. Can I tell you something? Don't despise the word of God. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 15 verse 31, 
that because you have despised the word uh, the law and broken the commandment the person shall be completely cut off i decree that from today you will not despise the word of god but you will love the word of god you will meditate on it and it will make you to be the person that you are born to be i decree over your life the word of god says uh, that the plans that god has for you they are plans for good uh, they are plans for your health and plans for your wealth can i encourage you and tell you something my brother my sister i decree and i decree clear that from today as you meditate on the word of god you come into the place that you know the good plans that god has for you you come into the place that you walk in the good plans that god has for you your day of wealth is here your day of health is here your day of well-being is here your day of promotion is here your day of elevation is here in jesus name can i talk to you and tell you something about the word of god the bible tells us, uh, tells us in joseph chapter 20 verse 45 that every good promise that God had made to Joshua it came to pass uh, I like putting my name in there and saying that every good promise that God has put for me Charles it is coming to pass uh, I want to declare over your life that every promise that God has made over you every promise that God has made over Kenya I decree that it is coming to pass in the name of Jesus uh, I declare that indeed even as Jesus said that not a tittle or a jot will fall but the word of god will be fulfilled uh, i declare over your life that as you feed on the word of god the word of god will come to pass in your life in the name of jesus uh, number two thing that you need to do that you may walk in greatness be a person of prayer be a person of prayer you need to be like jabez uh, jabez refused to re remain in the condition in the situation in the circumstances that he was he refused to believe that he was was born to be poor he refused to believe that he was born to be sick he refused to believe that he was born to be in pain he, he refused to believe that he was born to be useless job as the bible tells us in first chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 the bible says now jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name jabez can you imagine she gave birth to him and gave him a name meaning pain yet the bible says he was more honorable than his brothers the bible is clear and it tells us that jabez called on the god of israel saying oh that you would bless me indeed i hear somebody crying and saying bless me indeed and i hear heaven saying if i did it for jabez i will do it for you my brother i will do it for you my sister i decree over your life that whosoever is in a place and is praying this prayer god bless me indeed your day of taking delivery is now your day of taking receiving your answer is today your day of the answer being manifest over your life is now can i tell you something jabez prayed and said and large my territory you've been confined in life long enough you've been in a place that has just been small i came to announce to you and to tell you that by the grace of god i decree that from today enlargement is your portion your business will enlarge to the right and to the left your day of elevation has arrived your day of promotion has arrived your day to be known as one that is great has arrived jabez continued to pray and said oh god God uh, let your hand be with me Jabez understood that if God is a great God he does great things and no one can compare with him Jabez cried and said God it is your hand that I need to be with you when God is in your affairs man cannot do anything the devil can't do anything when God is in your affairs and the hand of God is in your affairs everything comes out well Jesus was in a boat uh, and as they were going from one end to one end uh, there rose a storm the bible tells us in mark the bible tells us that the storm arose and the disciples began to fret that they would drown that they would die and they woke the master up and when he woke up he said peace be still when the hand of god is with you when god is with you no matter what the storm is uh, greatness arises and said peace be still i decree over your life that is you arise in the place of prayer you will come into the place of greatness uh, you will become 
someone that is more honorable than your brothers and your sisters. You become honorable even in your place of work. You become honorable wherever you go. You become honorable in all of life's affairs. You will be known and be given honor in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us of Elijah. Elijah was a man of like passions. That's what the book of James chapter 5 from verse 17 to 18 says. Uh, Elijah, because of prayer, he affected the environment by having no rain for three and a half years and then after that he called for rain. He affected the political status. Elijah impacted even the religious status of his society. I want to declare and to also to encourage somebody here. I pray that you will arise in the place of prayer and you will say Jehovah God, Kenya can never be the same because of me. Kenya has to arise into a new place of greatness. Uh, God, my family is coming out of this miry clay and you will make us to stand in the place that you've ordained for us. Um, I want to announce to somebody who's been crying to God, uh, crying to the heavens, uh, crying and crying all over. Your day of greatness has arrived uh, the same way Elijah prayed uh, and the Bible says that God hearkened unto him. Uh, I decree that God will hearken unto you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I declare that indeed, uh, even as the word of God says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Uh, your day to see great and mighty things is here. Your day of greatness is now. Your day of walking in greatness is here. Your day to possess greatness is here. I decree that your finances come into the place of greatness. Your health comes into the place of greatness. Your marriage walks into the place of greatness. Everything about you shall be great in the name of Jesus. Uh, your day of a turnaround uh, because when you meet the one that is greater, uh, greatness is imparted. Uh, God is turning your life from being nothing into being one that is greater. Uh, I decree and I declare over your lives uh, that from today in the name of Jesus uh, greatness shall not depart from your lips. Uh, greatness shall not depart from your lives. Uh, greatness shall not depart from what pertains to you. I decree that whatever is in your life, uh, wherever you are and you have been struggling, uh, I decree that in the name of Jesus uh, you will not struggle anymore because you are great. Uh, think about her majesty, the Queen of England. Uh, she doesn't have to even carry money so they tell us uh, because money, the money in the United Kingdom bears her face. Um, she doesn't carry it because she cannot carry what bears her face. She's the one that gives her money value. She's such a great person that the world honors her. Let me talk to somebody who's ever, wherever, whoever, however, whichever, whatever the situation you are facing. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you are born to be greater. I want to encourage you the same way Jabez got on his knees, the same way Elijah prayed, uh, that you can also open your mouth and declare, oh God, uh, this is my day for greatness. Uh, this is my time for greatness. This is my period of greatness. Uh, and I declare that as you make that prayer. Your day of receiving an answer is here and now. Your day of coming into greatness is now in Jesus' name. The third thing that you need to do that you may come into a place of greatness is be a person of praise. Be a person of praise. Be a person that is thankful. Be a person that is grateful. The Bible says in Psalm, Psalms 100 verse 4, we enter the gates of the one that is great with thanksgiving. Too many of us in life are so busy grumbling and no wonder we are groveling in life. You need to be a person that is grateful that you may be great and full of it. You need to be one that indeed acknowledges that God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Only you are God and no one else. When you decide to give God praise, you are declaring God of who he is. You are praising him for what he is. When you're saying thank you, you're saying, God, thank you for all the things that you've done for me. The fact that I'm alive, I may not have everything I want, but God, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you for blessing me. 
thank you for giving me life. I may not have everything I want, but God, I'm alive. That is good enough reason for me to jump out of bed and to give you a praise. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22, now when the people began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes. When you open your mouth and you give God praise, the Lord sets ambushes against every enemy. The Lord rises against every foe that has settled against you. I want to encourage you that not only should you sing songs when you go to church, uh, but develop the attitude, develop a habit that wherever you are, you have a song of praise that you're singing to God. Uh, I want to encourage you that you rise up in the morning and say, God, I give you praise for this day. This is the day you have made. I will rejoice because it is a day of greatness. I will be glad for indeed it is a day that indeed we will see your goodness. Uh, I will rejoice because, oh God, uh, you alone are God, uh, and there is no one else but you. No one else does great things like you. Learn to open your mouth even at lunchtime. Learn to open your mouth even in the evening. Learn to open your mouth even when you're in the matatu. Learn to open your mouth even when you're on the border border, and all you will say is, God, I just want to give you praise, for you alone are the most high God. I thank you because in Genesis, you're the creator. I thank you because in Exodus, you're the one that leads me out. I thank you because in Leviticus, you're the lawgiver. I thank you because in numbers, you promise me that you cannot lie, that indeed what you promise you will do. I thank you because in Deuteronomy, oh God, I meet the one who indeed is mighty. You're the one that says that I am the head and not the tail. You're the one that gives me the power to create wealth. I thank you, Jehovah, because in the book of Joshua, every wall of Jericho is coming down. I thank you, Father God, because in the book of Judges, you're the one that anoints and delivers me from my enemies. I I thank you, Father, because in the book of Ruth, uh, you're the one that takes me from the unknown and puts me in front, and I have a child when everything else seemed dead. Uh, you're the one that turns my bitterness into joy. In the book of Samuel, you're the one who's the prophet, oh God. I thank you because your word is always coming to pass. Uh, I thank you because in Samuel, I meet a man called David. Uh, he was brought from the back, from the sheepfold, uh, and put in front and became a king. Uh, Jehovah, I thank you because in my life I may not be known by anybody. But Jehovah, as I give you praise, you are the one that is the lifter of my head. You're the one that meets my needs. You're the one that protects me. You're the one that delivers me. You're the one that surrounds me. You're the one that is my glory. You're the one that is my shield. And you're the one that is the lifter of my head. You can go through every book of the Bible and give God praise for every good reason. Now, I want to encourage you to tell you something, that I give God praise because he's the soon and coming king. Uh, he's the one who is mighty. He's the one who is glorious. Uh, he's the one who's a holy God. He's a mighty God. Number four thing that you need that you may see greatness, you need to have faith in God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. You cannot be great if you cannot please the one that is great and is the one that has made you. You need to have faith in in God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, for indeed the gospel is preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith with those who had it. Until faith is mixed in what you're hearing in the word of God, you cannot be able to enjoy the profit of God. You cannot be able to walk in the place of greatness. Can I talk to you and tell you something? It is faith faith that brings you into a place of greatness. Uh, Jesus, a blind man, walked up to him in Matthew chapter 9. And when he walked up to him, he asked him, what do you want me to do? He said, I want to see. And Jesus looked at him and told him, according to your faith, uh, according to your faith, uh, according to your faith, uh, Faith is God's vehicle for delivering your miracle. Faith is God's vehicle for delivering your greatness. Uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, when you read through the whole of Hebrews chapter 11, you encounter a hall of fame. Uh, you see men and women who by faith, they subdued the kingdoms. Uh, they made lions keep 
quiet. Uh, they did great things. They took over the places uh, all because they had faith in God. Uh, faith is what you need that you may come into the place that God has ordained for you. The Bible tells me of a man called Abraham. Abraham was told by God at 75, leave this place and go to a country that I will show you. I want to encourage you and to tell you something. Faith is going the step that God has told you to go. It is doing what God has told you to do. Abraham was promised by God and told by God that you would have a child. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 20 that he did not waver. Abraham did not look at his age. He did not look at the wife's age, but he believed that the promise of God would come to pass. Uh, I don't know what you are believing God for. Stop looking at your circumstances and thinking that it's never going to come to pass. Stop looking and thinking that it's never going to happen. Can I talk to you and tell you something? My brother, my sister, the promise of God will come to pass. His word will never fail. Uh, man may fail, but God can never fail. The last component that I need to talk to you that brings greatness is that you need to be a person that loves God. You need to love God. You need to love God. You need to love God. Love is the greatest thing. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, that indeed, and now abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 that love never fails. The reason Jesus came and died on the cross was that you and I may encounter the love of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God didn't show us his love because we knew him or because we deserved it, but because he loved us, he sent his son to die for us. Can I tell you something? God is love. You cannot be great and not be a person who loves God. Well, you cannot be great and be a person who walks in love. You cannot be great if you are not one who loves like never before. And I talk to you and tell you something. Faith cannot work unless you're one who walks in love. The Bible says that faith, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. I want to encourage you and to tell you something, my brother, my sister, wherever you are. Check your love walk. Check your love walk. Find out if you are walking in love. Find out if you are walking in the grace of God and loving God like never before. Find out if you are in a place where you love God extensively. I encourage you, my brother, my sister, be a person that loves God and you will see the greatness of God like never before. Listen to what I have said. Greatness is your portion. You are born to be great. Um, be a person who feeds on the word that you may draw greatness. Be a person of prayer that you may engage greatness. Be a person of praise that greatness may contend for you. Be a person that walks in faith that indeed you may unlock the promises of faith that bring about greatness. And be a person that walks in love for God who is great and is the great king over all the earth and is one who does great things. He is a God of love. Let me tell you something in closing. Until you are born again, you cannot walk in the place of greatness. Until Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, you cannot see greatness. Don't, be, um, don't believe that money will make you great. It's Jesus in your life that begins the process of you being great. Wherever you are, if Jesus is not the Lord and Savior of your life, I want to invite you at this moment to lift up your hand and say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent today as a sinner. I come before your throne of mercy and grace. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my heart. Father, I ask that you will cleanse me of every sin. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, over my affairs. Cleanse me. Cleanse me of every sin. Cleanse me of every evil that I have done. Cleanse me of every wrong that I have done. I pray, Jehovah God, that you will from today, even as your word says, even as I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior, from today I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, you are great. As you take those few principles that I have shared, 
I believe your life will be one that is filled with greatness. Father, we want to say thank you. Greatness is our portion. Your word says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Father, even right now we come in agreement. I come in agreement with every listener wherever they are across the world. I decree that greatness is their portion. Your word says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray that you will show Kenya great things. Uh, you will do great and mighty things over Kenya. We lift the president, his wife, the deputy president and his wife. We lift the entire cabinet before thee, O God. May this be their day of greatness. May this be their day of you showing them great and mighty things. Uh, may Kenya arise to new levels of empowerment, of progress. Uh, may Kenya arise to be a nation that Jehovah God, for your word says righteousness exalts a nation. May Kenya rise in the place of greatness, that as righteousness comes across each and every person, O God, that indeed, O God, we will be exalted, even above what other men may be saying is the level of which Kenya may go to. I pray for every cabinet secretary, I pray for every governor, every member of parliament, every senator, every MCA. I pray for the government, I pray for every civil servant, I pray for every teacher. I pray for every Kenyan wherever you are. I decree greatness is your portion. Uh. We are for signs and wonders. Uh. Wherever we go, I decree that we will walk in signs and wonders. Uh. I decree that whatever may have held back signs and wonders in your life, it is being pushed back in the name of Jesus. Uh. It is being pushed away. Whatever the enemy had set as a trap over this nation, over your lives, over your family, over your finances, I I decree that it is destroyed in Jesus' name. I pray and believe. Amen. My name is Charles Karanja. I'm a pastor with Light of Glory House. We meet every Sunday at Pride Center, Pride in Westlands on Westlands Road next to Graffins College. I invite you for a service from 9 a.m. Our service is from 9 to 11 every Sunday. We look forward to meeting you, and I look forward also to hearing from you. May God bless you richly. God bless you, and bye.